This book told an amazing story, and it was a wonderful read. This book, not so much. Hello Booktube, this is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. Today I'm going to be doing a book review. The book is called Warfare in Ancient Greece by Tim Everson. This was published in 2004 by Sutton Publishing. What's the book about? Well, ranging from about 1600 to 150 BC, Warfare in Ancient Greece talks about the broad range of weapons, armor, helmets, and other hardware used by ancient Greeks. The book is broken up into five chapters. Early Mycenaean period, from 1600 to 1300 BC, the Late Mycenaean period, and the Greek Dark Ages, from about 1300 BC to 900 BC, the emergence of hoplite warfare from 900 BC to 525 BC, the periods between the Persian and the Peloponnesian Wars between 500, no, yeah, 525 to 400 BC, and finally the Hellenistic period between 400 BC to 150 BC. So each chapter is broken up into a series of topics, and the topics are about weapons and armor. So you've got a section on helmets, a section on armor, such as bronze cuirasses or iron cuirasses in a few instances, and cloth armor, like the linothorax armor. It also talks about spears, shields, and swords. Uh, later chapters go on about missile technology, uh, slingshots, javelins, things like that. And then when you get into the late Peloponnesian War and early Hellenistic era, the book talks about cavalry and how that was used and it became more prevalent. It also talks about um, catapult technology, catapults, ballistas. So what information did the book have? What good information did the book contain? Well, the book contained a lot of great information on the weapons and armor, giving very detailed descriptions of each. If you want to know the thickness of bronze armor in the Greek periods, it's 1 to 1.5 millimeters thick. For a weapons recreation specialist, this might be an interesting read. There's enough detail in here for someone to build something that's reasonably accurate to what existed during the Greek times. But other than that, the book just lacks context. It doesn't have the history behind the weapons. It doesn't have the story behind the weapons. And really, that's what I was looking for when I picked up this book. I was looking for the story. So did I like this book? No, I didn't. The book read like a thesis. The author quotes over 150 references to other scholarly works um, to substantiate or corroborate his findings and his work. And essentially, it was just a dry read of facts and figures. Another drawback to this book is the placement of the illustrations. The illustrations are strewn out throughout the book. And while in most cases that's kind of good, in this case it didn't work because I was on page 75 and it referenced figure 49C. And I had to flip through the, a lot of the pages in the book until I found the uh, figure on page 137. This happens throughout, so figures are referenced multiple times in the book, either on separate pages in the same chapter or in different chapters. And for me to color code or tag each figure so that I know how to quickly get to it would have been too much. So I ended up spending a lot of time flipping through the book just so that I can have context when the author was talking about an image within the book. So the author also references other illustrations and other pages from other books. And this is where the thesis comes into play. Unfortunately, I don't have all those books. He references over 150 different books. As much as I would love to own 150 different books on ancient Greek history, I'm not going to. So when I'm reading this book and he makes reference to one of the authors, I don't have that book. So I can't pick it up, look at what he's talking about and get the context of what he's saying. So without the slip cover, the book is really nice. It's a nice black hardcover with nice golden text on the spine. But the unfortunate part is that when you open the book up, it's got glossy paper. And this is the kind of paper that I'd expect from a textbook. It felt like this. In fact, instead of using a lot of post-it notes to tag my pages, I ended up highlighting key passages that I wanted to reference in the book. And I don't typically do that unless I'm highlighting my own textbook. Who is this book for? 
So Everson says, and, and I'll quote it, he says that the book will appeal to anyone interested in ancient and classical history, as well as historians of warfare and archaeologists. Maybe, but someone with a passive interest in ancient history, or someone that wants to read up on the battles that took place, the people that stood out in those battles, or the sense of what the fighting was like with the arms and armor being used, that information is not in this book. And it's disappointing because it is a good book. There's a lot of interesting tidbits of information in here. For example, the boar tusk helmet that was used during the Mycenaean age, 40 to 50 wild boars were needed to make one helmet. You know, that's pretty interesting. So would I recommend this book? Unfortunately, no. I would not recommend this book to the average reader of ancient history. I'm not even sure I would want to recommend this book to a weapons recreation specialist or an archaeologist. Again, there is a lot of good information in the book. It's just a dry read. And that's sad because I really did want to like this book, but it just didn't draw me in. I felt like I was back in class studying for midterms when I was reading this book. So all in all, Warfare in Ancient Greece, this I think I'd give it a two out of five stars. I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't a thrilling read. It was dry and it was a little hard to get through at times. The information again was very interesting, but it wasn't interesting enough to keep me wanting to read it. I finished it, but it was a hard read. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I do wish I loved this book more. Unfortunately, I didn't. This is Fred and you're watching Read by Fred. They are the ancient, not ancient, tales told by book on war. No. 40 to 50 boars were killed just to make one helmet. Wow.